Now that we've gone over the intuition of what a bid price is, we can start to look at the various ways of calculating bid prices. And we'll go through a few of the models that are used uh, in revenue management. Let's take a quick look, though, back at our uh, previous video example uh, as a refresher. So we, s we had this little network here. And for the JFK Miami leg, we said there was a bid price of $175. And we used that as our control mechanism. So we said the minimum acceptable fare for the next seat to be sold on the JFK Miami leg was $175. So that if a customer is willing to pay us more than $175, we would accept that. And if a customer was willing to pay us less than $175, we would deny that request because the opportunity cost of that seat, of the 100th seat, that was being sold was $175. In other words, we had an expectation, we had calculated an expected value of $175 for that seat. So we would not accept less than $175 because there was, uh, we had some uh, likelihood, some expectation that if we didn't sell the seat today and saved it for a future customer, then we would get, on average, $175. So now we want to go and see how you calculate that uh, expected value, that opportunity cost. And I said, you know, all this intuition comes back to Littlewood's rule, so we're going to start there, although that's not really probably the best way to calculate bid prices for O&D revenue management. It is a good way to motivate the discussion. So let me uh, write down Littlewood's rule for you. So here's Littlewood's rule. And I used the same notation that I used in the earlier video so that it's familiar. Let's take a look at how to use Littlewood's rule to calculate the expected value or the opportunity cost that we said was the bid price in our example above. So just a quick refresher on how to read this rule. We said that there were only two fares in the market and they were a low fare and a high fare. And we could then use Littlewood's rule as a control mechanism by comparing the lower fare that was being offered to the expected value from saving the next seat for a higher fare customer. So we assumed that low fare customers arrive and request seats before higher fare customers. So we could uh, say that there's a customer standing in front of us offering us a fare. We should accept that request if the fare that's being offered is at least as great as the expected value from holding that next seat, in this case theta, for the higher fare customer. So we calculated some probability that we could sell that next seat to a higher fare customer, multiply that probability by the higher fare, and we got an expected value. So in this case, let's say, let's make our example worse at uh, work, we could say that let's say the high fare was uh, $350 and the probability that we would sell the next seat at a high fare was uh, 0.5, then the expected value would be uh, $175 and that would be used as the bid price. And we saw we could use that as the bid price right here. So essentially, you could use Littlewood's rule to calculate a bid price. Now, in practice, we don't really use Littlewood's rule. We use EMSR, which is just a generalization of, EM, uh, of Littlewood's rule. I like to explain things using Littlewood's rule because it's, um, it's just a little simpler to understand the intuition. But you would uh, actually use uh, EMSR if you were uh, trying to calculate a bid price using uh, this relationship. And in fact, uh, there are some uh, examples of where airlines use this kind of uh, model to calculate uh, bid prices, and they're called uh, heuristic bid prices. Heuristic, uh, heuristic bid price. So, in other words, this isn't—it's not a network model. It's really not optimal, um, but you can get a bid price using uh, Littlewood rule or EMSR. So there are a couple things to think about if you were considering using uh, heuristic bid prices in a revenue management application. The one real advantage is that 
This expected value is very easy to calculate. It's very fast. Um, it, it's done at the leg level, so you don't need a full network optimization. Uh, you could re-optimize uh, very, very often. You could even do it after every seat is sold. So the implementation of this is much easier than a network model and really gets around some of the uh, practical challenges with uh, implementing uh, network models. On the other hand, there's a real challenge with using this model and getting an accurate expected value. So we know we can calculate the expected value very quickly, but how accurate is it and is that going to lead to good performance in a bid price uh, control mechanism? And the challenge comes from this value right here, this fare. So in EMSR, if we were implementing this as EMSR for leg level control, this fare would be the value to the leg that we are controlling. And now on that leg, there are uh, many different uh, itineraries. So in our example above, let's go back up there. We said, uh, you know, there's the leg is JFK Miami, but there's people flying from LAX to Miami, from Boston to Miami, and some local customers. Well, in, a, when in, in an EMSR implementation, you would take some, some uh, combination, some average, maybe a weighted average of those values, and come up with a fare that represents the contribution of selling this seat to that leg, to the JFK Miami leg. In O&D revenue management, this value represents something different. It's not the contribution to the leg, it's the contribution to the network from selling this seat. So let's take a look at what I mean there. Let's say um, we're calculating a bid price for JFK Miami, and we're looking at coming up with that fair value by including this uh, Boston to Miami $375. Well, you might say, well, we'll just take that $375 and then average it in somehow to this leg value, maybe using some some weights of demand or something. But when you think about the value to the network of taking a seat out of inventory, you have to consider the impact to this leg. So for example, the bid price in this leg is zero. So if I take this customer, this $375 customer, then the, and, and, and sell that sell both of these seats to that customer, then I think we could reasonably say that the incremental value to, that net, to the network is $375. But let's look at this example over here. The bid price is $200. If I accept this customer from LAX to Miami, and the customer's, let's say it's the Y-class customer, he's paying $400. Well, now, is the incremental value to the network $400? Not really because the bid price tells me that the opportunity cost for the seat I'm giving away is $200. So I'm not really gaining $400. I'm gaining $400 minus what I'm displacing on this leg. So the real network contribution in this case is only $200. Well, if you're trying to come up with this fair value ahead of time, and you're not doing network optimization, so you don't know what this bid price is, that becomes very, very difficult. And if you can't accurately calculate this fair value, and then you calculate expected values, bid prices, using in inaccurate fair values, you're going to get very poor results. And your O&D control may be worse than the leg level control that you could just you know, use without going through all of this. One thing you could do to calculate the displacement cost is to actually run some simple network model, say a linear programming model that you know, doesn't incorporate any stochastic demand, to come up with some estimate of these uh, bid prices or displacement costs on these legs so that you could get a more accurate representation of the uh, network contribution from this fare. Uh, and if you remember the video from Displacement Adjusted Virtual Nesting, that's essentially what they're doing. They're trying to come up with a displacement cost so that when they do virtual nesting, they have uh, 
an accurate way of defining the buckets into actual network contribution instead of uh, leg level contributions. Now you could do that, of course, if you're going to run a network optimization to uh, calculate displacement costs for leg level heuristic bid prices, then it calls into question whether you should just be calculating network level uh, bid prices to begin with. In terms of evaluating whether this might be the correct model for a particular implementation, you have to consider a couple of things. So mathematically, this is probably not that close to coming up with an optimal bid price. And we'll look at the more um, sophisticated mathematical models that, you know, while not optimal, get closer to an optimal bid price. But in practicality, the ease of implementation of heuristic bid prices lends a lot of value um, in the real world. And there's been some studies, some simulations that because you can re-optimize more often and you can optimize at the leg level instead of having to do the network level optimization all the time, you can come pretty close to uh, the revenue um, to capturing the level of revenue that you can get from a full uh, network optimization model. As we go through the other videos, we're going to progress through the more complex models. I think you'll, you'll have a better sense of what I mean when you see just how difficult it is to um, use some of the up other network models. So we're going to stop here for now, and in the next video, we're going to take a look at linear programming. See you then.